get serious on how to get some test categories of that. We have our top five selling incubators here at our private property. We have, we're doing this after hours to show you guys exactly how to get the best results from your incubators. We have our Rivers Egg Tech, our Brinsey, our Barotto, the Nurturites, we have, well, the Nurturite 360, and we have our Janoles down there in there. So we've got, got, a, got a great range of, of excellent quality incubators. We've got the, the best of the Chinese brand, which is the Janole, best of the Italian incubators with the Brotto and the Rivers, and the best of the UK market with the Brinsey. And then also the American market. So the, so the Nurturite 360 is the top rated incubator in the US at the moment. According to Google, so um, yeah, so today we're going to put our eggs in. We're, we're actually going to go through and put eggs in quickly into each one. We're going to show you quickly how to adjust humidity, temperature, uh, set the eggs properly so they're ready to go. Uh, we are going to go through how to set up each incubator in a lot more detail in separate videos because because what we want to do is show you exactly how to do it properly for each incubator. But we're also going to have general videos where we just go through how to do everything across each one so you can see how each one is working, compare the different models, see what you like, what you don't like, and just get a feel for how, how all these incubators work. So, so with us, it, over the next 21 days, we're gonna be launching as many videos as we can. We're gonna have the detailed videos on each incubator coming online. Keep an eye on our Facebook our website and our YouTube channel. We're also going to have um, some more advanced incubation techniques we're going to go through. We're actually going to put some eggs in here which are currently underneath some broody hens. I don't trust my broody hens to stay broody for too long because they've proven to us in the past that they will just get up and leave. So before they get up and leave, we're going to take those eggs off them and we're going to put them underneath. Underneath, We're going to put them inside, the, the down inside the Janelle 24. And I'm going to show you how to candle the eggs and how to tell the, roughly what day the eggs are, how they are by candling. Going to use some different techniques that uh, a lot of you would be unsure of how to do. Um, some of you are more, um, some of you have customers who have had more experience would be doing this yourself, but some of the newer customers would be quite scary. I'm not sure how to do this. Am I going to hurt the eggs? Am I going to kill the eggs? Uh, what do I do if my broody hen gets off them? So, we're going to show you how to do that and how to get the best results out of that. Um, so, bear with us as we go through the next 21 days. We're pretty excited. We have quite a lot of, of eggs here. Uh, we're gonna get the eggs into the incubators now and start the incubation process. So here we have our eggs that we're gonna put into the incubator here. We've got quite a bit of variety here. We've got our own dark barred Plymouth Rock. Uh, these are a purebred, our own purebred showbred quality chickens that, that we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna incubate the eggs from. Uh, we've got some uh, some, some silky eggs from, from a local breeder. We have some Borwerk and Lakenvelder eggs from another local breeder. Uh, we've been talking to all the local breeders and using the Facebook egg groups to uh, acquire these eggs. We've got another few dozen of mixed mixed breed eggs. So uh, I think the lady said there's uh, there's wine dots, there's silkies, there's eyes of browns and some brahmas. So it's gonna be quite an interesting mix of what comes out of that packet of uh, that box of eggs, but yep, we're all up for the adventure. So let's see what comes out. So um, what we need to do now is we're just going to go through each incubator quickly, and we're going to put the eggs in. Uh, before we start, though, the best. A lot of people ask us, um, when do we put eggs in? Like, do we put eggs in straight away? Do we wait two or three days? Do we wait two weeks? Uh, how 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 quickly do we need to put them in? How long until the eggs start to go off? So if we're collecting eggs, how long should we keep the eggs before they start going off? So the best general rule is don't keep them for more than seven days to, for the best hatch results. So I'll start again. So if your eggs are seven days old or less, that, that's going to guarantee the highest hatch result from your eggs. If you put eggs in the incubator, which are between seven and 10 days or seven and 14 days in that sort of a week to, week to two weeks, two and a bit weeks. Uh, there, there will still be eggs that hatch. There'll definitely be eggs that hatch. The, the hatch rate will still be okay, but it won't be as good as the hatch rate if you had eggs in there which were seven days or less. Uh, some people like to wait one or two days before putting the eggs into the incubator. So they collect them, 
they stole them pointy in down and they wait a day or two before putting them putting them in I'm, um, I've done that before and I've put them in straight away and put them in after a day or two I haven't actually seen a massive change in uh, in hatch rate some people swear by it um, but for us we, we take the more practical approach so if we get we collect the eggs and we have enough eggs to fill an incubator we'll put them in the incubator I'll turn it on I oh, will turn it on first of course like we spoke about yesterday uh, and then we'll fill up the eggs um, and we'll get things happening so yeah so the best best general practice is eggs which are seven days or less old uh, they're going to have the best hatch rates um, anywhere look like, like I do understand if you're ordering eggs online especially through Australia Post at the moment which could be uh, anywhere from seven to forty days <laughs> when they arrive um, so if you're ordering eggs through the post, you may not get the eggs for 14 days, but don't stress. Sometimes, you know, if the health of the parents are excellent, if they've been fed well, uh, they're good quality hens and roosters that are the parents of the eggs and they're posted and they're more than, 10, more than seven days old, then you might actually get even better hatch rates than some eggs that are less than seven days old and come from parents that haven't quite been on a good feed or have, aren't quite feeling that best that day when they've when they've created the egg. So all we can say is give it a go, do your best, give it a go. Uh, the whole process is a lot of fun. Don't be too upset if some don't hatch. Uh, it's the whole process. Don't take it too seriously. Look, uh, definitely um, do your very best and try the very best for the eggs. But um, if things don't, don't work out too well, the first hatch, that's, that's fine. Keep trying, learning, learn as you go, uh, practice, and before you know it, you'll all be experts, <laughs> or experts, uh, in the whole process. So let's go, let's, let's load some eggs. So here we are, we're ready to install the eggs into our first incubator. We're going to do the Nurture Right 360 as our first one to go. So what we need to do We've actually we've already added water to the to the water channels. We've got our water bottle here. We've already come through. We've got water channel A. You can see water channel A. Water channel B. B is only for lockdown. Days 19 to 21 for chicken eggs. Water channel A. We just all we simply do is just pull the water in until you can't fill it up anymore. And that's that then sets the humidity. So we can see on the screen up here. Currently have 42% humidity inside the incubator. It's dropping down as I take the lid off. So we put the lid down over here. We're going to set up our eggs into the Nurture Right 360. So we're going to put some of those, uh, some of the Warwick eggs in that we have. When I put these in, I always put the pointy end facing forward on the Nurture Right. Reason being that they roll, they roll a lot better because of the way they rotate. They, if you had, if you put an egg on the table and spun it, it would actually spin in a circle like this. So, pointy end in, it naturally wants to spin in that direction. I'm just putting the smaller ones in the middle here. Some of these full work ones are a little bit smaller. We'll just pop them in the middle. Now we have a total of 92 eggs. So our plan with the incubators, we have 144 egg capacity with these five incubators. They're all slightly different sizes and they hold different egg capacity. We have 96 eggs uh, and 144 positions. So what we're going to do is put 12 eggs in the nurture right. 12 eggs in the rivers and the brotto, 12 in the uh, on the janol, and then once we've done that, we'll work out a spread of eggs across uh, the Brinsey and and the other incubators. So we're good to go in the nurture right here. So once the, once the cover's back on the nurture right, what I always like to do on this model, I'll push push and hold the plus and minus together goes beep and the eggs will turn so we just want to make sure the eggs are all turning around nicely JP to be rolling very nicely there you can't can see there is a few eggs with a little bit of dirt on them that's fine don't wash your eggs 
Uh, you can scrape off large, large chunks of droppings or large, large amounts of, of dirt, but don't wash your eggs. There's a bacterial coating on the eggs which protects them and protects the contents of the egg from any um, bacterial infections. So if you wash your eggs thoroughly before putting them in, you're actually taking the, that, that nature's own um, bacterial coating off, which is protecting the egg, and you're leaving the egg susceptible to any bacterial infection. So don't wash them. You can just scrape the, the poo off or any droppings or mud that's on there, but yeah, uh, any heavily soiled eggs, try and scrape it off. If it's too soiled, don't use it. Uh, but eggs like this are fine. So we're good to go with the Nurture Right. Let's move across now to the Janol 24S. So here we have the Janol 24S. Janols are the best of the Chinese incubators. You can see the S model now has an egg counter. This one actually counts up from zero. The Nurture Right counts down from 21. Uh, we're flashing now. We've got low temperature because I've taken the lid off. But that's all good. So what we want to do is move this forward, put the cover back there and there we have our egg tray, so we have our egg, egg tray egg dividers hatching tray, we, we actually have quite a detailed video on how to set up basically the um, General 24 the operation of the General 24 where it comes to loading eggs is identical to the 24S the hatching tray has a rib along there here for a guide and a guide along this side the idea being that when the egg tray sits on, on top of here it slides up and down nicely and um, you've got to balance it properly <clears throat> it slides up and down nicely here when, instead of going it won't go sideways it'll just go up and down which is what you want through the eggs so we'll put the hatching tray back in and the egg tray what we're going to do is load some of our mixed breed eggs into the uh, 24S. You can see that the egg size for these ones is quite small. I'd say these would be silkies. So what we want to do with these silky eggs is set up the dividers so the eggs are guided when they roll but not restricted by rolling. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Because we're only going to have 12 in here, I might actually set these up in the middle. Normally what I do is I set them up from left to right, so start at the left, move all the way to the right. But if you're only going to use a few eggs, I would recommend keeping the eggs towards the centre on these Janoles. Uh, the, the, the edges can get a little bit cool on them, but the centre is maintained very well, so let's, let's do that for these eggs. It's a bit tight. Open up the divider there. I'll show you what I'm doing with the dividers a bit closer in a second. Don't break the eggs in the incubator. Look, I almost did. It's not fun to clean up. <clears throat> it's a bit tight. here anyway so let's have a look what are we doing here what we're doing is we're setting up these egg tray dividers so when a when the egg motor the egg turning motor pushes them they all roll smoothly so I'll give you an example if I have this space too too wide so uh, make it too wide I've gone a little bit too that's a bit too, too silly now but just as an example <laughs> here having a party in there uh, as we move left and right, they're going away with the place, so that's going to not going to be good for the embryos inside there. So um, if we get too tight, we can have the other issue where they won't roll. So let's let's make it too tight on purpose. Don't have them too tight because they don't really roll that well. So what we want to do is space them out <clears throat> nicely so the eggs will all turn nicely. We've got a bit of a fan club next door where our uh, Quamby chicks 
have decided it is now morning because the lights are on and it's party time <clears throat> they're saying hey look at me we're over here there's one there they've managed to uh, about, about 20 seconds ago they were all out here feeding and making a mess of their water and now they've all run back underneath that these two guys are just uh, staying up here a little bit later <laughs> very cute so we'll change their water in a second um, so what we need to do is yeah, just make sure the eggs are rolling I need to adjust those rollers a little bit more it's too tight so the problem I've got here at the moment is what you'll see is I have a problem where we've got a small silky egg and we've got another breed egg here that may be um, or a big silky egg so what we want to do is put all the same eggs all the same size eggs in together so we can set the dividers properly otherwise we'll be chasing our tail the whole time that's better they're all going nicely now so what we can do is when we're going to load the lid going to do it one-handed while I hold the camera what we want to do is Sorry, bear with me for a second. What we're going to do, there's our turning motor, that's a turning rod on the motor. That's got to go into that slot. So this plastic disc with the motor. Let's see if I can point to it for you. Plastic disc here with the, with, the, with the metal rod has to go into that slot on the egg tray. If it doesn't go in, your eggs will not turn. So it goes in like that, you can see it goes in nicely. Drop the lid down. So we drop the lid down, covers back on. Our 24S is now loaded up. We haven't got any water in here. So let's uh, let's fill it up with some water. I we'll have a squirty bottle. They come with a squirty bottle. So what we want to do is put on the very first day on the Janals is put hundred and two is put three hundred ml of water into hole one. There is actually a one on there, you can't see it on the camera. I'm using hole one at the moment. So we want to put 150 ml of water in there. We've already got some water in there, so um, just really as an example. So day one, the bottle's got a bit of a leak. Uh, day one, 300 ml of water into hole one. And then every consecutive day, we put 150 ml of water into hole one. So days one to 19, 150 ml into hole one. When you load the eggs, 300 mil. So 300 mil fills it up, and then you, and what you're doing then is maintaining the water in hole one every day by adding 150 mil. On days 19 to 21, we have hole two here. So days 19 to 21, we put 150 mil in hole one, and 150 mil into hole two, and we do that to increase the humidity inside the incubator. So they've worked out the channels inside these janoles. So that whole one will provide a um, humidity inside of 45 to 55%. And then they worked it out. If you fill up hole one and hole two, it's been worked out that you'll achieve your 75 to 85% humidity uh, inside the janelle. So it's very clever. It's, 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 it's the same sort of uh, same design that a lot of the manufacturers use. Pretty much all the ones here have the same design except for the, the Brincy, but that's got its own uh, own peristaltic pump pumping the water in. So there we have it, there's our Janelle 24 we have. It's heating back up here. Uh, day counter is on zero. If we wanted to reset the day counter, you can see on the, on the operation tips here, we, plus, we push plus and minus together, it'll reset it. Uh, we, also, we can also go through and check the temperature and the humidity. We'll do that tomorrow. That'll be tomorrow's job. Checking the temperature and make sure, make sure the temperature and humidity is behaving itself. Normally what I would do is check those things about half an hour to an hour after the um, incubators are running. Uh, and I will do that, but I'll, in this video series, I'll show that as a day, day three video for you all. Okay, we're ready for a Brotto Real 24. It's, it's time to get some eggs in this guy. 
we have water tray one, water tray two. Uh, the Brodo is like the rivers, uh, the yeah, we'll lock the rivers and also lock the Nurture Right 360 and the Janol 24S. They've set up the humidity is that tray one will achieve your 45 to 55% humidity. Tray one and tray two, when they're full of water, will give a higher humidity, which is ideal for lockdown on this incubator. So let's take the lid off and get the eggs in there. So you can see on our Brotho Real 24, we have our egg turning rack here. The egg racks are set up for, for smaller eggs or quail eggs. You can put chicken eggs, bantam eggs, geese, duck, turkey eggs in the middle. They're, they're, they're designed to hold all those size eggs. They're, they're quite a versatile egg holder. They'll hold 24 chicken eggs and a lot more quail eggs, 96 quail eggs. Um, yeah, the, great versatility with these racks. It's, it's a very clever idea. We've got the uh, Got the turn-in motor here for, at the front. I was going to show you. I'll show you how the how the racks attached to the turn-in motor inside, just quickly. So we can take the racks out. You can see that I've just popped that rack off. They really love being in there. They don't want to come out. So we have our humidity. And a water tray one that'll set the humidity for for days one to nineteen. Our turn-in motor comes through here. It's actually a flat pin. See there, it's a, it's a flat shaft. See it better from this angle. And that flat shaft, when the egg tray rack, when the egg tray goes in, flat shaft goes into that notch there, and that will then turn all the eggs together. The egg turning on the on the uh, Brotto and the rivers turns every hour. They go from left to right. They move very very slowly. You won't if you sit here and watch it. It won't move because because you're watching it. But if you walk away and come back in half an hour's time, you you'll see that it has moved. <laughs> so what we have is our real 24. Let's put some eggs in. We actually have a few different size eggs here, which will be good. Again, I'm going to put these eggs pointy end down, always on this style of egg carrier, always pointy end down, because the air cells for the eggs, egg cells will, will form at the blunt end. And when the chicks pip, or the chicks won't pip in the rack, unless I forget to take them out. Um, but we won't do that, because we're doing a video, and we're showing everyone how to do it properly. Um, so we put the eggs in, pointy end up, that'll help the S egg eggs to, to develop really well and the air cell to um, form nicely. Days 19 on the real 24 these whole racks come all the way out, the hatching tray goes into the bottom and the eggs sit flat. No turning during days 19 to 21. Same with the with the Janol and the Nurturite, the egg turning trays come out and the eggs will always sit flat on the hatching trays underneath ready for hatching. It's the safest way for the chicks to come out, otherwise if they hatch in these racks they will have a high chance of getting injured and that's really not, not what we want to happen. So we're going to put the eggs in here. There's another dozen into this one. And we're good to go for the for the real 24. That, that looks good. Make sure the eggs all sitting nicely. Some of them will rock back and forth a little bit, but that's okay. They, they won't fall out, so that's all good. Put the cover back on. Interesting, interestingly enough, each manufacturer seems to have its own recommended default temperature for their incubators. On the Brotto, is at 37.7. Nurturite, it is 37.5 degrees. Janelle it's 38, they've all calculated the temperature that it needs to be where they, and the reason they do that is they've all calculated where the temperature set point needs to be where the sensor is, so the sensor is always at the top here somewhere. So we're heading up a little bit higher, knowing that down at egg, temp down at egg temperature we should have 37.5 degrees, which is the ideal temperature. So Brotto have, in, have, have tested and they, if we heat 
then down at egg temp will be 37 and a half. Nurturite, the airflow in the Nurturite is actually quite, is, is, is quite, quite laminar I suppose is the word that you'd use, it's, it's quite a good airflow and very even so they're assuring us that the air temperature, air temperature at egg height is the same as what it, what it is where it's getting measured. And the Nadal's, um, the Nadal's are th set at 38 degrees Celsius. Um, the temperature inside can vary a little bit in the corners, to be honest, completely honest. Uh, in the middle, it's quite stable. Um, but, but the guys at Janal, where the temperature sensor is sitting, have worked out that if it's measuring 38 degrees where the temperature sensor is sitting, but down at egg height, it'll be 37.5 degrees Celsius. So let's go with the defaults for now. Here we have the Brinsey 56EX top of the range bench top incubator. Brinsey in the UK, they're an excellent product. One of my favourites, what we're going to do is, uh, what we're going to do is to put our dark barred Plymouth Rock eggs into this guy. We're going to, we're going to load it up. So what we, what, what, there's two options with the Brinsey's. What we can do is lay the eggs this way. If they're chicken eggs, I wouldn't. Uh, some of the smaller eggs you can, but the egg trays are actually um, designed, you can actually put the eggs up pointy end down like this. We're going to go through and load up the eggs pointy end down. If you're doing so you need to load up the full rack, if you leave gaps they will possibly fall over. We're going to load this guy up, give it a good workout. So we've got our Plymouth Rock. Put, what I do when I collect the eggs, I actually ride on them. So you can see this one was collected on the 14th. So it is more than seven days old. But that's okay. Um, there was a very bad weather last week. And my Plymouth Rocks were not wanting to lay very much. Which I don't blame them. For those. It's, it's spring here, almost summer. And it felt like winter last week. I wouldn't want to be laying eggs in that weather either. All ready to go. We've got a, a, uh, we've got some uh, dark barred Plymouth Rock in there. We've got some Lake and eggs. We've got a few Vorwerk eggs in here as well. We currently have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, twenty, six, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight, forty, forty-two eggs in here. So it, it's a good run. Not completely full, but we, I want to share the eggs onto the other ones as well. So let's put the top back on. I have disconnected the power on this one because what it will do is trying to in, it'll try and increase humidity while the lid's off. So it'll be squirting water everywhere. So I don't want that. So I'm turning the power off, just making sure the lid is sitting down. Does it feel right? Feels much better. It has like a nice positive feel to it when it's in. Yeah, we're sitting on the power cable, so let's get that out of the way. That feels much better. So we're putting our we've got a water bottle at the back here for humidity for the peristaltic pump. Put that down there. Let's get our power cable. I'll go back in. Beeping at me, saying, "Hey, what have you done? The power went off." So the P is warning us the power's going off. We can clear that by pushing some buttons on the on the on the keypad. I'll do that later on. So we can see the temperature is 28.1. Humidity is actually um, not too bad. But what, what, what we find sometimes when we first put eggs in uh, is the moisture content of the eggs will affect the humidity during the first 24 hours or so so as, as some ex extra water inside the eggs depending how fresh they are and where they've been stored the extra moisture inside the eggs will uh, evaporate and that will increase the humidity for the first 24-48 hours so don't worry too much uh, the Brinsey will control that all by itself on other incubators um, it will just naturally goes down so don't stress about it I'm just watching the temperature go up it's going to take a few minutes for that to Go back up 
here we go 25.6 so what I want to do is by pressing the OK and the minus I'll be able to make these egg turners turn you gonna turn for me there we go eggs are all turning just making sure that they're all gonna sit nicely one of them sort of went over a little bit there that's that's okay that's half rolling and half standing I'll fix that up soon I'll spread them out a little bit more that'll be good so there is our Brincy 56 EX forward loaded looking forward to getting some good results from our incubators here we have the last of the series of the incubators to uh, to have the eggs loaded into it our Rivers Egg Tech 24 we're going to put some silky eggs into this one uh, the egg trays are very very similar to the Brotto 24 so the Rivers Egg Tech 24 has the same features in regards to the way the eggs sit you can get quails or chickens or turkeys or geese duck eggs into those ones it's the same, it's the same turning motor assembly what I'm going to do is fill it with water with that out so you can see what happens inside go and grab our little water bottle so as, as we're filling into the tray one pouring water from the outside You may or may not be able to see the water coming in, but it'll give you the idea. So what we have here is the water. As I put water into here, tray one, the water's filling up here. It's nice and clean in there. So that's all ready to go. So we'll put the camera back down so we can have both hands free. What we want to do is put the egg trays back in. Now make sure that they sit positively, positively onto the motor. Make sure that little slot fits over the shaft of the motor. You can't force these guys to turn. They just turn left to right. Every hour they go, they slowly go left and right. Uh, so we can't do a motor test on these. But we can check them in half an hour to an hour to make sure it's working properly. So it's going to pop some silky eggs in and that would be all our incubators all loaded ready to go. So as we load it, thank you for watching this video number two in our series. Tomorrow we're going to go through checking humidity and temperature. We're going to go through what, how I do it. We're going to add some um, separate sensors. These separate sensors are designed to make sure that the incubators are behaving themselves and that the temperature and humidity is uh, sitting ideally within range. There's some pretty cool little uh, little tricks that we have up our sleeve. So yeah, watch tomorrow. We'll, we'll show you our tricks and we'll show, show you our secrets and the, the way we do things um, to get the best results on out of our incubators, whether it's a Brincy or a Janol, a Brotto or a Rivers. Um, our sensors will work on each one. Uh, we'll show you how to do that, how to get the peace of mind, everything's working properly, um, and to get the best results. So thank you for watching. Please comment any questions that you have. Please let us know. We're doing this for you guys, doing this for everyone. So if you have any questions, by all means, please ask us. Put a comment on YouTube. Put a comment on our Facebook page. Uh, send us an email. Send us a Facebook message. Uh, we've got a notification form on our website, you can send us a notification. Uh, if you're enjoying the series, say hey, hey guys, thank you for the series. We love it. Thank you for your work. Uh, we always like positive feedback. If you don't like what we're doing, send us a message, say hi guys, thanks for your efforts, but we really like this or like that. And that's fine, we're, op we're open to all types of feedback. We just want to do what will suit you guys the best. So let us know what you're thinking. If you have any specific questions on any of these models, let us know. And we will be answering your questions as we go through the next 21 days together. So thank you for watching again. Visit us at Unique Poultry on Facebook, www.uniquepoultry.com.au. You can see us on Instagram as well. So yeah, we look forward to talking to you guys. Uh, don't be shy, send us some messages and we look forward to seeing you soon.
and talking to you soon. Thank you. Bye.